Has SpaceX just doomed the Starship? A new bombshell revelation from the company states that they are completely changing the game plan for Starship's second test flight. While SpaceX's track record speaks for itself, many are questioning this decision and wondering if it is wise to make a massive change to the craft's flight plan at this late stage of development. Let's talk about the Starship's upcoming test flight, this new plan that SpaceX has decided on, and how the company has alleviated some of the FAA's concerns to acquire a new launch license. The SpaceX Starship stands out from most ordinary rockets. It's not just large and powerful, its uniqueness lies in the specialized ground systems that prepare it for launch and ensure its safe return to Earth. Within the space community, there's considerable anticipation for an upcoming test in which the Starship will demonstrate its capability to return from orbit. The journey towards realizing the Starship dream hasn't been smooth. Similar to many novel and innovative ventures, Starship faced skepticism. This skepticism grew stronger when the first real test of the Starship prototype occurred on April 20th. Onlookers around the world watched with a mix of fascination and concern as the massive rocket took off. However, the test concluded with a massive explosion, leading to uncertainty about the project's future. Following the explosion of Starship 24, many may have anticipated SpaceX to take a step back. However, they pursued the opposite path. Within just three months, they dedicated extensive effort to address around 80% of the challenges they had encountered. This unequivocally demonstrates their unwavering determination and commitment. Now fortified with renewed confidence, they are setting their sights on another launch, employing two new models, Booster 9 and Ship 25. The upcoming mission seeks to accomplish what the previous one involving B-7 and Ship 24 could not achieve. Launching from the Texas-based Starbase, Booster 9 is being readied to soar at an impressive speed of nearly 17,000 miles per hour. This velocity will enable its safe return and landing in the ocean. As the Starship sets out on its voyage, its last stretch over land is anticipated to cross over Indonesia. After this leg, it will traverse the expansive Pacific Ocean before commencing its descent towards Earth near Hawaii. This mission has been meticulously crafted to showcase the Starship's proficiency in covering significant distances while ensuring a safe return. The entire journey, spanning from liftoff to landing, is estimated to unfold in a compact 90-minute window. The mission will culminate with the Starship descending and achieving a water landing, diverging from its usual landing procedure. Instead of having a landing pad or a catching mechanism, SpaceX's decision for a splashdown landing in this Starship mission is causing some raised eyebrows. This is particularly interesting given SpaceX's track record of successful ground landings. Since 2015, the space community has been consistently impressed by SpaceX's ability to bring back the Falcon 9 first stage rockets to Earth. They achieve this by landing them upright on specially designed legs, a sight that has almost become routine. Furthermore, SpaceX has even accomplished successful landings of its larger Starship prototype at their Texas location, known as Starbase. SpaceX's choice to land the Starship in the ocean, instead of using a high-tech method like Mechazilla to catch it, is based on a combination of safety concerns and practical considerations. When you think about it, allowing the Starship to return to Earth horizontally, similar to a person lying on their stomach or executing a belly flop, presents certain challenges. This decision holds significance. It reflects the graceful descent of a skydiver before they touch down. In this context, the vast and deep ocean provides an ideal setting to assess how the Starship manages such a descent. By dropping the Starship into the sea as part of a real-world test, SpaceX can study how the craft behaves during re-entry and evaluate its performance in navigating the intricacies of this process. This hands-on approach gives SpaceX a valuable opportunity to observe how the spacecraft holds up against the demands of space travel, particularly the intense heat and pressure encountered during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Furthermore, the ocean offers another undeniable advantage, its natural characteristics. The expansive waters serve as a cushion for the spacecraft, providing a softer and, in many respects, more forgiving landing surface compared to solid ground. The ocean absorbs a significant portion of the impact, thereby reducing the potential damage to the Starship. SpaceX's decision to avoid using Mechazilla to catch the Starship isn't solely about the rocket itself, but also takes into consideration the environment from which it launches. The ground infrastructure, which encompasses the launch pad along with its intricate technology and equipment, is remarkably delicate and valuable. By avoiding the mid-air catching approach with Mechazilla, SpaceX is essentially safeguarding this infrastructure. It's crucial to visualize the intricacies of the launch pad. It's far more than just a concrete slab. It represents a sophisticated nexus of electronics, fueling systems, sensors, and support structures. Each piece has a specific place and function, collectively ensuring that the Starship has the best possible conditions for a successful launch. However, despite today's advanced technology, all of these intricate elements remain vulnerable. Launching a rocket is never completely predictable. There's always an element of uncertainty. When Starship, coupled with the Super Heavy, made its momentous liftoff on April 20th, it marked a monumental occasion in space exploration. The immense power generated by its 33 Raptor engines is no small accomplishment. But along with such power, there come consequences. The sheer force of nearly 17 million pounds of thrust reverberated through the ground and took a toll on the launch pad. 
As SpaceX aims to push the boundaries even further by boosting this thrust to nearly 19 million pounds, it's important to recognize that while Elon Musk and the SpaceX team are known for their audacious endeavors, they are also meticulous and cautious in their approach. Introducing a mechanism like Mechazilla into this equation could potentially cause more complications. It's important to keep in mind that problems that arise during a launch or landing have broader implications beyond just the possibility of a rocket failure. They could result in damage to the multi-million dollar ground infrastructure. Elon Musk had originally aimed to launch the Starship by the end of this summer. However, this aspiration encountered a hurdle due to the absence of a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA. Now, new developments suggest that the Starship may be edging closer to its second test flight. In a recent development, researchers have successfully identified the enigmatic material that descended from the sky on April 20th, coinciding with the explosive demise of the Starship rocket in South Texas. The substance has been determined to be nothing other than ordinary beach sand that originated from beneath the launch pad. Philip Metzger, a planetary scientist at the University of Central Florida, has offered reassuring statements by confirming that this material poses no health hazards. Thorough examinations carried out at Metzger's laboratory in Orlando, Florida, as well as at Rice University in Houston, have unequivocally confirmed that the substance is indeed sand. Metzger is optimistic that these findings will not only offer reassurance to the concerned residents of Port Isabel about their air quality, but also contribute to the enhancement of more robust landing pads for future space missions. This discovery captured Metzger's attention due to his specialized expertise in how rocket engines displace soil during landings on extraterrestrial bodies like the Moon or Mars. An image on Twitter showing sand on a Tesla parked several miles away from the launch pad sparked Metzger's curiosity. The considerable distance the sand traveled appeared unlikely to be solely due to rocket exhaust. Subsequent investigations led by Metzger and doctoral student Brandon Dodson unveiled that the particle sizes primarily fell within the range of 100 to 300 microns, indicating the absence of any potential respiratory risks. Furthermore, another issue that requires attention is the rocket's flight termination system, a mechanism designed to safely end the rocket's trajectory if it veers off course during its journey. An intriguing event unfolded during the maiden flight of the Super Heavy Booster, approximately 90 seconds into its voyage, when the flight termination system was unexpectedly activated. Regrettably, there was an approximate 40-second delay between the initiation of the flight termination system and the subsequent breakup of the rocket. While this delay didn't compromise the rocket's safety due to its trajectory over open waters, it represents an undesirable gap for a system intended to rapidly halt the flight. In the days following this launch incident, Elon Musk put forward a solution. He proposed implementing an extended countdown for detonation to ensure the prompt and complete depressurization of the propellant tanks. These new upgrades seem to have made a difference as it was recently revealed that SpaceX has finally submitted its final investigation report on the April 20th launch to the FAA. Once this report is approved and any further corrective measures are made, the Starship can finally soar through the skies once more. With each passing day, it is becoming more and more likely that we will finally witness a second launch of the Starship in the coming week. However, the success of the mission is another story. It remains to be seen if SpaceX's decision to land the Starship in the ocean is a smart choice, or if they are wasting a valuable chance to test the Mechazilla. What are your thoughts? Please let us know in the comments section below.